Hi, it's Owen on the 29th of May with our service of devotion and prayer. As we begin, I invite you to close yourself, I invite you to uh, close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose, and release with a long, slow sigh. Settle into the gift of stillness. It's God's breath that fills our lungs. And it is in God that we live and move and have our being. So we remember that we're in God's presence now and for all time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two laws hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write both these laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Please join me in saying a portion of Psalm 107. To give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his spirit of steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from the trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. Hear the good news according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to the disciples, Why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, why do, we, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Gospel of Christ. The scriptures speak of fasting and hunger. I don't know how many of you have experienced fasting 
for spiritual purposes. I think the first fast I ever did was for medical purposes, having to fast a certain period before medical tests. But I have experienced fasting for spiritual purposes. There is a certain value in denying ourselves that which we take for granted. Often the not partaking in what we enjoy leads us to appreciate what we find joy in. But the times we're living in now are not so much fasting as deprivation. Many of us are fasting from many things, among us food, but many are not participating in the things we enjoy. Most notably, just the joy of being with family and friends, the joy of being able to embrace and hug and share affection. The absence creates a genuine longing. Fasting is done really in the context of control. When we fast, we have control over what we're fasting from. We have control over when it ends and when we choose to partake. That's not the case with the isolation and physical distancing that we're being asked to do. But we're doing this not so much for ourselves, but for our neighbors. So I invite you to feel the loss of what we're not partaking in, to feel the hunger, whether it's for food or friends and family. But know that that hunger is not for us, but for our neighbors, protecting us all from the spread of COVID. This is an act of love. And I invite you to settle into that love. Amen. And as we prepare for prayer, I invite you to close your eyes, sit straight and tall. Let your teeth part so that your jaw relaxes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it out with a long, slow sigh. And bring your awareness just to the breath. And as you're able, let the breath be what it is. Allow yourself to breathe without trying to control how you breathe. Simply watching the breath flow in and the breath flowing out. And as you're receiving the breath in, say thank you. And as you're expelling the breath out, release it to God, saying your will be done. Inhaling and saying thank you. Exhaling and saying, your will be done. Letting our breath become a prayer. And as you're receiving your breaths in, slowly gather the names of those for whom you wish prayer. And as you're breathing out, offer up those names to God. Breathing in and thanking for those you wish prayer. Breathing out and saying, your will be done as you offer up those names to God. And add your own name to the list. As Jesus taught us, we pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I bid you peace.